Hey everyone, I'm Renee and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how I did this masked painting technique. This video is part of a special collaboration. I've teamed up with the United Nations of Sugar Art for World AIDS Day to support the Global Fund. My video is one of several made for this collaboration. I'll have links in the description box, or you can click on the images on screen now, and I'll also have links at the end of this video. Be sure to check out Haniella's, Cheeky Crumbs, and Montreal Confections to see the projects they've made. To get started with the masked painting technique I'm going to show you, I have an image that I've drawn and I found this image actually online and I just drew it out with marker and any image you want to use will work. And on top of that I'm going to lay some parchment paper, waxed paper would also work, or freezer paper, but um, it helps to have the wax paper or parchment paper if you are trying to trace a stencil or a logo. And all you do is trace around your image and cut out the pieces. Now that the pieces are cut out, I'm going to liberally coat both sides with shortening and I'm actually going to go a lot thicker with the shortening on the side of the parchment that is going to be touching the cake. You want to have a nice thick layer there because this is what will repel the paint and water and give us a relief or masked image. Here I have my cake already covered with fondant and I covered that the night before so it would be really well set and dry on the outside. This is an 8 inch cake, round cake by 6 inches tall and now we are ready to get started. Now carefully I'm going to attach the parchment shapes and you really want to be careful and you have one shot to get it in the right spot because you don't want to smear the shortening on the surface of your fondant. So I'm going in with my X-Acto blade to very gently push that down to make sure there are no gaps and that the parchment pieces are attached really well all the way around because you don't want any liquid to be able to seep under there. If you aren't careful, you might get some shortening on other parts of the fondant and then those parts would also repel the paint when we're painting. And for that reason it really helps to use a little pointy tool to when you're tapping down the parchment pieces. I'm using vodka as my liquid and I am going to be mixing that with my Americolor gel colors and this is super red that I'm using first and I'm just mixing in the vodka to make a fairly thin consistency paint. Starting with that red, I'm going to paint over my image, being careful when I'm going over the parchment pieces so that I don't accidentally spread the shortening across the fondant surface. The look I'm after is pretty organic and messy, so I'm not worrying about the brush strokes. In fact, I kind of like to see the brush strokes on there, so not worrying very much about drips. I don't want it to drip outside of the area I wanted painted but I'm not worrying too much about the way this painting looks.
To make this a little bit more interesting, I'm going to blend the red into some electric pink that I'm making into a paint with the vodka the same way and just blending that right next to the red so that it kind of looks like a seamless transition. And last, I'm going to blend in some fuchsia at the very end. After refining and cleaning up the edges a little bit, I'm going to let this dry slightly so that the paint's not really wet and drippy and make sure to save the paint for any touch-ups later on. I let the painting dry just slightly for a few minutes so that it's not really wet and I'm going to carefully pull off the parchment pieces using my X-Acto knife to gently lift it up from the surface. You want to be careful during this process so that you don't accidentally smear the paint onto the white spots. When you peel back the parchment, there will be a lot of shortening left on the surface of the cake, and some of that shortening has color on top of it, as you can see here. So we want to make sure everything is really, really dry before we move on. Now all the paint has dried, so I'm going to go in with a clean paper towel and just start wiping off the excess shortening, and with that, a lot of that extra paint will come off. Now this looks pretty great and you could be done right here, but the perfectionist in me wants to clean up those lines a little bit. So I'm going in with some vodka on a clean paintbrush and I'm going to gently clean up any paint that kind of got on the white. And that mostly happened when I was cleaning up the shortening. So I'm going to neaten this up a bit. Now to clean up those edges of the image a little bit, I'm just going in with some of the same color paints that I used on a small paintbrush and I'm going to gently fill in the lines to make them cleaner. If you do this, you just want to make sure that you blend out so that you don't see clearly demarked lines of the paint. You want it to blend into the paint layer underneath. And that's it. I really love this simple technique and the way it looks. I was inspired by a lot of masked painting I've seen with watercolor and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you'll give it a shot. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out the links in the description box so you can see all of the amazing pieces from this collaboration and find the link below if you wish to donate to the Global Fund. And don't forget to check out the other videos from this collaboration. You can click on the images on screen now or find links in the description box below.